Hi, my name is Melanie and I am your IVF nurse. Today's topic is going to be on endometrial receptivity assessment, so otherwise known as the ERA biopsy. What this does is it will indicate when the optimal time of progesterone exposure is indicated for embryo transfer. So what does that mean? If you're working with a clinic or physician that is um, open to doing natural cycles, you'll be informed as to when to start your blood test. Once you've done your blood testing and you start to indicate that you're nearing ovulation, what will happen is, is that uh, the doctor will order an ultrasound to assess your endometrial lining. If your lining is appropriate, then what they'll have you do is just follow up with a few more blood tests to determine when you've ovulated. Once you've ovulated, the doctor will count out X amount of days, usually about five or six days post ovulation, and will determine the date for the endometrial biopsy to occur. Now, this test can also be done with a medicated cycle, meaning that you would report your day one, and then from there, you would be instructed to start your estrace or your estrogen supplementation. You would be assigned a specific ultrasound date where they would assess your lining, once you've done your lining, you would then be given the okay to start your progesterone supplementation. Now, what happens is, is that once you've started your progesterone supplementation, they will want to know the specific time because everything that you've done in your ERA biopsy cycle is supposed to be repeated meticulously in the actual transfer cycle just to get everything right. So what you want to do is note the time that you start your first progesterone supplementation and then going into your biopsy. Um, if you're doing progesterone supplementation, you really don't, you want to check with your clinic to make sure that you should be inserting the morning of the procedure only because it's a lot of gook inside the vagina and the doctor's just going to have to clean it out anyway. So with a natural cycle, your body will produce its own progesterone, which means that you don't have to take the progesterone supplementation, which is good. Um, however, most clinics will do medicated cycles just for that consistency and the predictability of it. Now, once the biopsy has been scheduled, and this is done in office, uh, no ultrasound is required. However, depending on the tilt of your uterus or if there's any indication of anything with your medical history, it can be done on, under ultrasound guidance. So what will happen, the clinic will inform you of a time that your appointment is scheduled for. You show up just before your appointment and what will happen is it literally takes a few minutes for the doctor to do it. So very similar to like a pap test. It is a little bit more invasive so you do want to bring a pad or a thin panty liner because you might have some bleeding after the procedure is done. And then um, you may also want to take some Tylenol or Advil an hour before the procedure. Now very specific or very few patients will be advised to have a full bladder depending on the tilt of their uterus. So this is something the clinic would inform you of if this is something that is specific to uh, how the doctor needs to obtain your sample. Now, once the sample is collected, and literally it does only take a few minutes, uh, if that, to have the sample done, uh, what will happen is it's sent away, and then from there it takes seven to 10 business days to, re to receive the results. The results will tell the clinic specifically, one, if you're receptive, pre-receptive, post-receptive, or if they are indicating that the biopsy be repeated. Now, depending on how many hours of progesterone exposure, if it is one and a half to two days, they may be uh, indicating that it be repeated, um, and the doctor would discuss that with you. Most times, the results that we're seeing are that they are pre-receptive or post-receptive or receptive um, and it'll be plus or minus three hours or plus or minus six hours so it's a pretty good indicator of when embryo transfer should happen very rarely do we see that it's insufficient and that they are specifically indicating that it should be repeated now if there is a discrepancy and they're thinking that you know you would benefit from a repeat biopsy, then the doctor would be sure to discuss that with you and let you know if that's an option. Now do keep in mind that repeat biopsies do come with an additional fee. That being said, the ERA biopsy, the initial testing itself, is not covered under the funded program, so it is an additional expense that you would be incurring 
uh, independently, so paying out of your own pocket for. So in the event that you do need to repeat the test, that's an additional cost on top of it. Um, and this is always the cycle prior to your embryo transfer. And the important thing to remember about doing this ERA biopsy is that however you do the ERA biopsy is the same way or the same way that you want to mimic the cycle for the transfer because that's how you're going to get the exact results and the optimal time for embryo transfer. My email is youribfnurse at gmail.com. Please feel free to check out my website www.youribfnurse.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.